everybody, what's going on? It's Bobby, and we're here talking about a camera that kind of confuses me. And the reason I say that is I know it is a budget-friendly full-frame mirrorless camera, but I'm not sure why Canon releases or do they release it at the wrong time. Anyway, here's our thoughts on the Canon EOS RP. Now, if you're wondering where all this noise is, what's going on, we're actually here at a skate park in Singapore on a Sunday where everybody's skating. It's a beautiful day. And we're gonna take some pictures of, you know, these kids skating around and all that fun stuff to sort of test the prowess of this camera and the lenses. So we thought, why not come here and have some fun? Anyway, let's talk about the camera a little bit. Now, the EOS RP, of course, as I mentioned before, is the budget full-frame mirrorless camera from Canon. It came out with the EOS R late last year. Everybody thought that was the budget camera. Canon said, nope, we got one less expensive. I think it started off as around 1200 US dollars for it, and I think it's gone down in price since then. Anyway, a lot of the DNA from the EOS R is in this camera. And I do have to mention, if you haven't seen our review on the EOS R, we'll put a link in the description below. But this camera is smaller than the R. And what I mean by that is when I had the R, I loved that the grip, all my fingers felt on the grip. It felt really secure, felt really great in the hands. But as you can tell, my pinky doesn't have a home. No more home with my pinky. Now you can get an extension grip to this for I think it's about 80 US dollars or thereabouts and you can get different colors, blue, red, black, whatever. Anyway, we're getting a lot of kids coming in right now. It's a family coming in. So we're gonna to move to a different location and talk to you more about the design of the camera. Now, as I mentioned before, it has that same DNA as the EOS R. A little bit smaller, but you can get that grip. But one thing I like about the RP is that the simplicity of the buttons and the dials make this camera very user-friendly for someone who might be new to the Canon a mirrorless system. Now, the EOS R had a lot of like touch bar there. It had a LCD display. It had a lot of buttons that could be a bit intimidating. The EOS RP is none of that. I picked up this camera within 10 minutes. I knew where everything was at on it. And everything felt where it should be. Uh, the dials felt great. The buttons have a nice click to them. Everything feels really good in the hand. In terms of materials, they are slightly different than the R, but this is a budget camera and it still feels really solid in the hands. As a matter of fact, I mean, it's lighter. It just feels secure and it feels really good overall. I have no issues with the RP in that regard. But let's talk about what's inside of this. Now, you have a 26.2 CMOS full frame megapixel sensor to this. Now, they say this is the, pretty much the same sensor that's in the 6D Mark II. I don't know, I never used that camera, but I'll take the other reviewers' thoughts on that as such. But it produces really good images, really good image quality for the most part. There are some caveats, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Also, You've got ISO from 100 up to 40,000. You can expand it, but then again, you're not gonna ever expand it beyond 40,000 anyway. So all that expanded ISO is just for more marketing purposes, in my personal opinion. You could probably push it up to 20,000, but would you want to? Just get a faster lens or get a different lens to sort of compensate for that. Now, you get that dual pixel autofocus in photos, and in video, you get it, except in 4K. When you're in 4K mode, you got a heavy crop factor and no dual pixel autofocus, but in 1080p, you do get it and you can shoot full frame, which for the most part, that's what a lot of people will be shooting with this camera anyway is 1080p. Now in terms of the speed of this camera, you get five frames per second if you wanna go into burst mode. And for a budget camera, that's more than enough. I mean, I'm getting some decent shots and for the most part, a lot of those action shots are pretty much in focus. Also, it depends on the lens that you're using and with the lenses I have today to test with the RP, yeah, they work beautifully. I mean, I pretty much have Pirelli F1 tires on a Toyota Prius, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a bit. So let's talk about what it's like to use the EOS RP. Now, I've used the EOS R before, so I was a bit familiar with their mirrorless system and sort of the new updated menus in this. And even if you come from the DSLR world, there's not much of a learning curve at all. I really applaud the full touch interface that Canon has put into this menu system. A lot of mirrorless cameras out there have selective touch. They didn't do that with this. It's a, it's a three inch display on the back, but it's not the most highest res display, but it, I mean, the menu's bright and vibrant, easy to navigate, no issues at all with it. And the touch is pretty accurate. Now the EVF is a smaller EVF than the EOS R, but it still has pretty decent resolution. I think it's 2.6 million dots or thereabouts. And sure, it's not that 3.6 million that we're getting on a lot of the full frame mirrorless cameras out there, but for day to day usage, you really don't notice much of a difference unless you compare it side by side. Images still look clear in the viewfinder, bright enough, you have all your information there. I have no issues with it at all. Now let's talk about the image quality on this camera. Now, a lot of people love Canon color science. I do, I'm a big fan of it. And it's in this camera. You're going to love the images out of this. Now I will say, for raw shooters like myself, 
you might find that the JPEG images can look better. Now, if you want to, of course, edit and do some more editing, you will shoot in RAW, but you're going to find that your dynamic range, it's not that great. Okay, so you really got to nail down your exposure. You really got to kind of know where you're shooting. And if you're one of those kind of photographers that just shoots and then wants to do everything in post, you're going to be a bit frustrated with the OS RP in that regard. But if you take your time, compose your shots, know your lighting, know your shadows, know your highlights, you'll be well rewarded with the shots that come out of this. I'm not gonna to talk too much about video on this camera because this is not a video camera, okay? Yes, you can do 1080p at 30 frames. You got dual pixel autofocus and all that fun stuff. In terms of video, you know, look, it's a consumer grade camera. If I have, like, say, a friend that's, you know, skating here at the skate park and I just wanna shoot some nice shots that I might just post up on an Insta story really quickly, this camera's great for that. If I wanna do a TV show with the RP or some beautiful documentary, no, this is not the camera for you. So you gotta sort of know where the RP sits in the Canon family and in the lineup and also don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole if you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean? It just, it's just not that kind of camera. But if you're into still photography, if you're into portraiture, if you're into you know, capturing some street shots out there, you're gonna find that this camera might be a good camera for you, especially at the price point. Now in terms of low light performance, this camera performs relatively well. Now, you saw my review on the EOS R at 12,500 and thereabouts with the ISO, I had no issues at all with images. Same goes for this, no really issues at all in low light. And of course, it depend it's all dependent on the lens that you're using. If you're using an F4 at nighttime, you're gonna struggle. But if you're using the 51.2, which I have with me today, or this 2870 F2, you're gonna get some beautiful night shots with this camera. So don't fret about it. It's pretty much all about the lens that you use. That's the most important thing about night photography. And especially with this bad boy, no issues at all. One cool addition to the RP in terms of autofocus, besides the dual pixel autofocus, is eye tracking and face detect. Now the eye tracking works relatively well, but you have to be close to your subject. If you're far away, you're just gonna see the face. So it's not as good as, let's say, Sony, but Sony's got that market cornered. But it's good enough, especially for portraiture, because when you're shooting portraiture anyway, you're up close to the subject. You're not that far away, you know what I mean? So it works good. Now talking about lenses, I have three lenses with me today. I have the 2870 F2, which is on the EOS RP right now. I have the 50 millimeter F1.2, and I have the 24 to 105 F4, which is known as the kit lens for the RF lineup. Let's talk about this lens first. It's always good to have a a zoom in your lineup, you know? And usually a lot of people have the 2470, the 7200, the 16, you know, 35, or, you know, thereabouts, right? This lens really covers a lot of the focal lengths you need at prime lens quality at F2 throughout the focal range. 28 F2 all the way up to 70 F2. That means landscapes, no problem. Street shots, no problem. Portraitures, no problem at all. Low light photography, no problem. Weddings, no problem. Concerts, no problem. You see where I'm going with this. At F2, it opens up a wide array of potential for you to shoot with just one lens. Now, this is not a cheap lens. It comes in around 3,000 US dollars. I think you can get it slightly cheaper now depending on where you buy it from. But in terms of Singapore price, just check with your retailers on it. But you have to look at it this way with this lens. If you were to buy a Prime at F2, a 28, a 35, a 50, and a 70, you would be spending arguably three times as much, four times as much. So this is kind of a really good buy when you think about it. It's a big lens at three pounds and around 1400 plus grams. It feels really weighty, especially in the RP where it pretty much makes the RP look like a, you know, an oversized lens cap. I mean, it's that big, but man, it rewards you with some beautiful shots. This has got to be one of my favorite zooms I've ever used. It really does. I mean, all the RF mount lenses from Canon are phenomenal, and this does not disappoint in the least. But we also have another lens with us that doesn't disappoint at all, and that is the 51.2. So here we are with the Canon RF 51.2. Now, if you watch my 1DX review that uh, was released a few weeks ago, we had a 51.2, the EF mount with it. And I said back then that it was due for a, an upgrade. I mean, it's beautiful, it's got a lot of character, but it's got some chromatic aberration. It's not the sharpest lens in the lineup. But we can release this for the EOS R. Man, did they hit a home run when it comes to a 50. Holy cow. You know, I've used a lot of great 50s. I love 50, that's one of my favorite focal lengths out there. And from everything from Leica 
to Otus, to pretty much all of them out there, right? But this is one of the top 350s I've ever used in my life. It is that good. The bouquet, the bouquet, however you want to say it. Tomato, tomato, I don't care. It is creamy, it is beautiful, it is luscious. It just makes your jaw drop. The problem, nothing to do with the lens. It's that Canon hasn't designed a camera that can take advantage of the optical quality of this bad boy yet. Sorry, I'm getting carried away. Because this lens is that good. It is phenomenal. Yeah, it's not a small 50, look at this thing. It's got girth, you know? But I don't give a shit about size. I just reviewed an Otus 101.4. I reviewed a lot of big lenses. I don't care about size, I want image quality. Oh man, does this thing deliver. Wow. But let's move on to the kit lens. And I'll calm myself down in the meantime. So now we're talking about the kit lens to the RF mount. That is the 24-105 F4 with image stabilization. Now this lens has it. The other two did not have image stabilization and that's good because inside the RP and the R, there is no image stabilization in the body. So this lens will come in handy. And for a kit lens, this is fantastic. I mean, we did a review on the lens on our EOS R reviews, so just check that out. Just to kind of rehash a little bit of that. It's great image quality. It's tack sharp. It really punches above its weight class in terms of price and performance. I mean, Canon really you used to make some cheap kit lenses. No, they've brought their A game with this. Easily a lens you could take with you on a trip. If you only had one lens, you could take this. And if you weren't shooting in low light, most of the time, if you're shooting in daytime, you get some phenomenal shots with it. It's that good. Now you probably noticed by this time that I got really excited about the lens and didn't get so excited about the camera. <laughs> And there's kind of a reason for that. Look, I know the RP is the camera that is for the budget-friendly consumer out there. And there's no problem, everybody has their spending power. Some can spend more, some can spend less. No problem with that at all. The question I have is that the camera, it does what it needs to do well, but at the price point, you spend, let's say, 1,200 US dollars for it, but if you see by all the lenses that I'm talking about, which are in the RF lineup, that's pretty much most of the lenses out there, they're all expensive. They're all more than the camera itself. You kind of question like, why did Canon come out with this camera now? Wouldn't have made more sense with the optical quality that came out with the 51.2, the 2870 F2, even the 24105 F4, if they came out with a higher res camera, let's say like a 5DSR variant for a mirrorless system, versus going budget. I mean, go budget when you have the budget RF lenses to go along with it. So if I spend 1200 bucks on this camera, USD of course, I can buy inexpensive RF mount lenses to go along with it. Now of course, you'll say, well, you can adapt EF lenses to this and it comes with the adapter inside the box. Yes, but if I'm gonna be stuck with EF mount lenses because of the price point, you know what I mean? So I'm sort of lost in that bit why Canon did that. For me, I would say that the EOS RP is a good camera, but not at this time, Canon. I'm not the only one saying this. Every reviewer has pretty much said this. We were all hoping for that pro version. Now we know you might not give out a 1DX version of the mirrorless format yet. That might come later after the Olympics. But at least a 5DSR variant, because these lenses can handle that resolution more than handle it. And yeah, we would like less of a crop factor in our 4K video for those who shoot 4K. Or we would like, you know, dual SD cards in there. Or a more pro variant. This camera, great, but it should have come out a year from now when you have the inexpensive RF lenses to match this camera and to match the price point. Those are my thoughts on the EOS RP. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We really appreciate all your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, good, bad, otherwise. Follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.